showed to the commission yesterday a magazine showing your photograph and the dress you wore at the time of your arrest and in which you remained until the trial in order to make the record complete I would like to tender that magazine is a magazine dated March 2, 1998. Is that the magazine? Which you showed yesterday dated about the dress you wore at the time of arrest. March. Yes. March 2, 1998. Look also at the newspaper called The Punch of April 29, 1998, on the fourth page. Is that also your photograph? In the Is that an exhibit already? No, sir, I'm telling you this one. Not red tender. Not yet tender. No, sir, they are not yet tender. Look also at the front page of The Punch of April 29, 1998. Is that also your photograph in the first page? The same dress? Yes, my lord. And the photograph of General Pisa is also there in the dress he appeared in the television a few minutes ago. Is that correct? Yes, my lord. I seek to send that. In the video that you saw, in what dress were you shown? My lord, before the video clip was shown, one of the landlord counsel asked me what dress was I on at the time of arrest. And I explained that I was in a shirt and a trouser. That was recorded before the planet. And on the video, I was shown in a French suit, my lord. Yes. Can you recall any occasion leading to weeping? As a human being, my lord, I have had one or two or three occasions to weep. My lord, that's my answer. Yes, yes, okay. Can you mention uh, anyone in the, 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 the Arab or anyone? Privately, at times, when I have my prayers, I weep. On one occasion, when uh, the late Gerard Mohammed Abacha's son died, and I paid him a visit, I wept. And the third occasion, was when uh, one of my aunts died. Ah, okay. Let's go to the second one. When the late Jarabaka son died, you were. Where did you go when you were looking? I what was that? I was called at night about the plane crash. And I went there with my wife. My wife went to his uh, own wife in his apartment. I met him because I was one of the first people to be told of uh, the accident. You saw a bacha? I saw a bacha. And then what did you do when you met him? We, we thought and I cried. I sympathized with him on the death of his son. What dress did you wear on that occasion? What dress? My Lord, I can't not remember. This was January 1996. Oh, I see. Another one. Yes, sir. It was January 1996 when this accident happened, and I went there. I cannot specifically remember. You say, yeah, you, say you were called at night. Yes, sir. Around you have your uniform. No, no, no. Yes. No, yeah, what dress? The civil dress. Yeah. But I can't remember what type of dress I wore that day. You are used to wearing French suits. <laughs> <laughs> I used to be offensive, but it's not really my habit of dressing. I prefer the flowery shirt over trousers most of the time. On the day you went to 
uh, sympathize with you for lots of his first son. That's what we are talking about. You said he woke you up at 12 midnight and you went there to sympathize with him. Yeah, my Lord, I'm saying that uh, definitely I didn't know. I can't remember Is what there? dress I wore on that night. No, no. Could it be dress shoes? It's possible because I have a lot of dress shoes. <laughs> Now, um, when you went to him to sympathize with him, uh, tell us to what extent you went in making him to forget what has gone. You pleaded with him. Naturally, for that type of uh, accident to happen, um, not only the head of his son, I think about 14 other people died. In that plane crash, it was really a shock. And then uh, I was even surprised that he himself had already taken the loss. He was not uh, crying. You know, but I felt it to the marrow. I must confess, at that occasion, I cried. And my wife too, really cried. Yeah. You also knelt down. <laughs> because the film showed you kneeling down. My Lord, I've already said that that did not happen, my Lord. I see. The dress I wore did not agree with the dress on that uh, film. That is number one. The conversation was not audible. Even the timing, I want the commission to investigate the timing. I saw the coup. Yeah, the the coup. I, yes, yes, my Lord. Yeah, I saw the Rabacha on the 28th of December. I don't know where they even started showing this film. My Lord, these are issues I said should be investigated. If I cried and knelt down before a butcher, there is nothing to be ashamed of in it. I always said it here, that our Lord that we serve, Jesus Christ, wept. But on that particular occasion, I did not, my Lord. All right. Um, uh, what the Lord is trying with you, trying to get from you, when you went to sympathize with him, that is to General Diga, I'm sorry, uh, General Bacha, when General Bacha lost his son, you pleaded with him, you worked, which is natural. Did you also kneel? I did not kneel, my lord. I did not kneel. I will call that video film trick. Have you seen this book before? The book is called New Scientist. How to lie with pictures. My Lord, I've, I've read it once. Hey, look at this. Is that, uh, Thank you. I have the full book, it's too big. That is page one and the page 13. But the original book is here. Show you. My Lord, I have read the book, How to Lie with Pictures. Former Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Shia Bami, he was in the witness box after General Dia. He was accused by General Dia as the brain behind his implication in the 1997 coup. General Bami is still at his own side of the story in his evidence in chief. Uh, you were, before this commission, when General Dia read his petition, and you heard what he said in both petition of, uh, admitted as Exhibit 1 and also Exhibit 2 is addendum. You listened to all he said, including his further explanations. I did. Yes. Now, do you have anything to say in response to all that he has stated? I do have. Yes. My Lord, sir, the witness has put down what he wants to say in response to all that uh, uh, General Dia. In writing? Yes, my lord. Uh, very good. I want them to after, he, after reading it. Uh, after tendering it first, then mark, then read. Okay, my lord. My lord, uh, can I have what you prepare? Uh, I put my response. My lord, sir, I seek to tender what is the this 
General, sir, please could you go through what read? Thank you, my lord. Before I go into my address, I will want to make a uh, suggestion to this commission. There are two vital witnesses that I think will be very helpful to this commission. And I hope the commission will make will try to get them. Give us their names, please. Their names are Lieutenant Colonel M. Garba. Yes. Commanding officer, former commanding officer, three guard battalion. Yes. He is now in the infantry school and center in Jaji Kaduna. Yes. The second one is Major Fadipe, the former chief secretary officer to General, General Diaz. All right. Who is incidentally, I saw him this morning. Is he in court or is he here today? Well, I saw him Fadipe? this morning. All right, it's the party here. Uh, look, uh, list of the names and the issues uh, summoned, please. All right, read them. My Lord, I thank the Archive with Almighty God for making it possible for me to be here today because I know my name has been all over the place for all sorts of things. And I think. This commission is, God, is God's gift for me to express myself, make my views known, so that Nigerians will actually know the truth. Now, these are statements on petition of Lieutenant General Olaji Bodia and the violations of my own rights and those of my family, friends, friends and relations. Introduction. I must state that I am particularly delighted at the opportunity extended to me by this honorable commission set up by the country's national democratic government led by General Olusegun Obasanjo, GCFR, to investigate cases of alleged breaches or violations of human rights to respond to the allegations concerning me in some petitions to the commission. I need also to say that my desire to speak on these issues that affect me in the petition became more and more bony in view of the personality of the chairman and other members of this commission. Your integrity and respect of the rule of law are unquestionable, and I enjoy all other well-being Nigerians in congratulating you, knowing that this task, as great as it is, is not at all capable of awaiting or betraying your sense of justice, God shall surely see you through. It is very surprising that even though General Diaz clearly admitted the fact that there was a coup plot in, in that his only complaint on the alleged scanty nature of the evidence, he still could assert that I quote, while the details of the alleged full plot are contestable, what are incontrovertible are the following glaring breaches of my fundamental rights and blatant abuses of the rules of natural justice, unquote. I have read the petition written by General Diaz, and I cannot help but sympathize with, the, with General Diaz's lack of grace to accept full responsibility for what he not only conceived, but also translated into action. This he did by contacting and recruiting officers in that regard, designing and funding, among other things, the execution of his conception. And I do state that whereas it remains incontrovertible that General Diaz conceived, initiated, and from the December 1997 aborted coup, the alleged breaches of Diaz's fundamental rights by me are not only contestable, but did not exist at all. Furthermore, contrary to the allegation that the 1997 December coup was a mass setup in order to humiliate General Diaz and others who are referred to by General Diaz in his petition, 
I fought my ethnic grouping within the army, unquote. The coup was in fact initiated by General Zia, who independently and personally cocked officers from his ethnic group for the coup. As the Special Investigation Panel convened by General Abdul Salam Abubakar, who was then the Chief of Defense Staff, who later set up the Special Military Tribunal presided over by General, General Malu, the present Chief of Army Staff, which convicted General Zia and others for the coup attempt. I stated the truth about the coup attempt. I will restate the truth of the facts as they were, including the antecedents, in order that Nigerians will enjoy the full benefit of this public charity and know the truth about the coup. I was never arrested and could not have been arrested for reporting a coup. Every officer in the Nigerian army is aware that once you know or hear about a coup and report it, you have no case to answer on the coup, and you cannot be arrested in connection.